But first, Liz, welcome to the show. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Michael. Happy to be here. My pleasure. Tell us more about Deep Isolation. Very interesting title for a company. I mean, that's a good one for you. Yes, yeah, some, some people think it sounds like a teenage grunge band, but um, actually what we're doing is looking to dispose of nuclear waste, so quite different. Yeah, we've I've never had anybody on the show that's talking about that real-world problem. I used to live in Nevada. I know all about nuclear waste there, but please, yeah. take, take the lead from there because there's a problem uh, here. It's not brewing. It's here, and there's 70,000 tons of nuclear waste that's temporarily stored above ground, so... Take the lead on this. Walk me through the path on this. Yeah, that's that's right. So the U.S. government has decided that it is the government's responsibility to dispose of nuclear waste. Um, This is waste that has been generated um, at nuclear reactors since the 1960s. And initially the thought was, we'll just push that off to the next generation. Um, But then in the 1980s, there was a decision taken that there was going to be a disposal facility in the United States, and that was going to be Yucca Mountain. And Yucca Mountain was going to take the waste from the many locations all around the United States um, by 1998. And as you probably know, that never happened. And so here we are um, many years later, and the nuclear waste is still sitting on the sites um, where it has been since it was generated many, many years ago. And there is no foreseeable option um, for, for, for solving this problem within a reasonable time frame. So Yucca Mountain is is still um, an option. I think there there is still some enthusiasm that it may happen, um, but there's also a lot of opponents who are opposing Yucca Mountain. And what Deep Isolation is doing is we're providing another option. So if a community, a state, and a utility uh, together want to solve the problem in a different way, rather than waiting for Yucca Mountain or a future consolidated uh, solution, then deep isolation can help. Break it down. What, what, What can you do? So we can take the waste that is currently above ground in either cement or in pools. About two-thirds of it is in pools still. About one-third of it is in concrete and steel uh, containers. And we can take it out of those containers and put it underneath a billion tons of rock. So using modern drilling technologies, this is actually relatively straightforward to do now. It's not tremendously expensive. Uh, We can drill down a mile. We then turn horizontally and drill horizontally for about two miles. Um, We even include a little plumber's trap in there to help ensure that nothing can ever get back up the vertical um, portion of the drill hole. Um, And this this gets it out of the community. So the community that has been uh, having this waste essentially in their backyard on the surface and in the biosphere now has an option, if they choose to take it, for securing it and get it in, getting it out of their community. Now, you're talking to somebody in, in Dallas who's very familiar with what's going on about the leakage from fracks. That's the first thing people are going to say uh, about this process. How do you ensure that uh, the seismic shifts that, that occur, even though sometimes they're, you know, they're subtle, that it stays safe. You've got to have some kind of a, of a way to do that that's, that everybody's going, all right, I'm signing off on this. Um, yeah, that's a really good question. So many people associate fracking with earthquakes. Um, Most of the time, it's actually wastewater disposal that causes the earthquakes, um, though fracking actually can do that as well. We're not fracking and we're not disposing of uh, anything under pressure underground. So those two things that have been known to cause earthquakes um, are not something that we're even considering doing. Uh, Drilling is known to be safe. It doesn't cause earthquakes. It's just a means of getting the nuclear waste out of the biosphere. Yeah, but but I'm not talking about that. I'm sorry. Maybe I misworded the question. What I'm trying to say is encasing the nuclear waste, because everybody thinks of it as highly toxic, and it's like there's hardly anything that's – I mean, you you have steel drums that this stuff is stored in in some cases right now. that's right. And eventually it corrodes the drums. So – You've got to have something underground that says it's not going to it's not going to leak through and end up in the water system or pollute the under underground that's going to seep out and affect you know the the biosphere. I mean humans yes. and, and plants. Yes, and so. that's absolutely right. And the challenge with keeping it on the surface or even in a facility like Yucca Mountain is that it's above the water table. 
And this means that if something dribbles down into the, the waste, it can actually pick up components of it and get into the water table. Um, by contrast, by putting it a mile deep, mm-hmm. we're 4,000 feet underneath the water table. Um, in, in a layer, we, we, we like going into shale layers or going under shale layers mm-hmm. that have been out of contact with the surface for millions of years. And that's a nice starting point for saying it's not going to get into the water table in contrast with being on the surface where it potentially could. Okay. All right. And being, again, familiar with drilling uh, here, and you can't help but have have that familiarity but in this part of the world, uh, I suspect that you just go wherever the, uh, wherever the nuclear waste is and start poking holes. That's more or less correct. We, we don't want to have to transport the waste if we don't have to. So if there is appropriate geology and interest from a community where the waste is already, mm-hmm. um, then we can just drill a hole uh, near the existing reactor. Um, in some cases, that may not be possible. So that would mean looking at another option for those facilities. Okay. Uh, is there anybody else that's come up with this concept besides you guys? Well, we seem to be the first ones that have understood the importance of uh, looking in shale layers, in or under shale layers. Um, but these are the layers that have um, shown that they can be out of the surface or out of contact with the surface for millions of years. Um, the most similar is perhaps the former Department of Energy vertical borehole program um, that was also looking using drill holes, but they were going vertically, um, and they were going into granite, which is really more of a research program, uh, more experimental, and it doesn't, it doesn't really draw on the incredible innovations that have happened in the, in the drilling industry. All right. Um, now, I've got a couple of minutes left on the business side of things. Are you self-funded? Are you raising money, taking on shareholders? How, how is this going? Yeah, so we're privately funded. Um, we do expect that eventually we, we will need to to have uh, government involvement in what we're doing. We would need a p- public-private partnership. Um, but we've been self-funded, funded by, uh, well, I should say funded by investors who believe in doing something important for the environment. Well, if they can invest in space, in rockets that, you know, that take people to, as, as a tourist, you know, around the, for, for a trip uh, uh, around the planet, I would think that this is a very viable business model. Have you drilled any holes or tested it out yet? We don't need to drill any additional holes because this is something that is really done every day um, around the country, as as you see out in Texas. Um, Our challenge is going to be getting the approvals that we need and getting the license that we need uh, to be able to move forward. So that's what we're focusing on. Okay. All right. Getting the, the licenses and the approvals from the government, or is it a state thing? It's mostly the federal government, though we are very clear we also want uh, interest from both the state level and the community level before we move forward. Okay, this is, you really piqued my interest. Um, uh, contact is at deepisolation.com if uh, any of our investors listening want to participate with you. Yes, that's correct. All right, Liz, it's been a pleasure. Thank you, and thank you for what you're doing for, uh, for our environment. Appreciate it. Thank you so much, Michael. You're welcome. Liz Muller, CEO, DeepIsolation.com. Again, a disruptive process and something that's uh, a commonplace problem that everybody wants to sweep under the rug, so to speak. All right, we're going to take a break. We're going to come back with Aaron Novick. Uh, he is the division manager of capital readiness for Blue Moon Capital Advisors, sitting in for Tony Drexel-Smith. Blue Moon Capital Advisors. We'll be right back. You can listen to CEO Money with Michael Yorba. <laughs> 